Yesterday, we introduced the main figures in the vision, and today, let's follow in with the action. So we're looking at Zechariah 3, verses 3 to 5. Listen. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, Let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. So let me tell you, you know the high priest shouldn't be wearing filthy garments, but Joshua represents the people, and the people have been pretty backwards from God's plan. So there he is. Yesterday we saw that Satan was standing there before him to accuse him. So those accusations just, they're not really addressed. He just says, I rebuke you. And now the angel of the Lord, which we know represents Jesus, he gives instruction to, to these angels that are standing by. And they said, take his filthy garments from him, take them away, and we're going to clothe them with rich robes. So have you seen these uh, artists' depictions of this, uh, where the angels are actually taking, he's got these filthy garments on, and, and there they are, and they're putting robes over the top. Uh, but that's not what the text says. Again, look at the text. What's going on is that they are totally taking away the filthy garments and they're clothing him with brand new garments, the, the pure garments. So this idea that this is just about uh, declaring someone to be forgiven or that it's just covering up the filth that's there, that's not what's in the text. Instead, what's in the text is that God actually transforms us. He takes away our actual filth, our actual guilt, and he replaces that with his actual effectual actual righteousness so it's a pretty pretty remarkable plan here god does not cover up sin he takes it away and those are very different pieces if you ever worked on a car you know and you were filling in a gap and you painted it over and put in some bondo and and then you painted it over well that that we all know that flaw is still there the, some people won't know it's there but you'll know it's there because you worked on it uh, this is not what god does what god does is he he takes away our actual guilt, and he gives us his true uh, right, rightness. It's a transformation, and that's what the gospel is all about. So at no point are our own works good enough. We're never going to qualify as having some kind of saving righteousness. All of our saving righteousness comes from Jesus. But this is a pretty interesting picture because here's, it, I said, we said before that Zechariah, God remembers his name, Zechariah's Actually, it's a very interactive uh, set of prophecies. And here what goes on is he's watching this and he can't help but interject. And he says, hey, he says, put a clean turban on his head. And what happens in the vision, God modifies it and he puts a clean turban on this guy's head, a clean hat. So pretty neat how God just, you know, even takes the suggestions of Zechariah and he incorporates them. God loves our suggestions. God is looking uh, to include us. So at the end of this vision, what? The, the, the angel of the Lord, Jesus, Jesus in the vision, at the end of the vision, he's standing by, it says. He hasn't uh, chased the devil's accusations. He hasn't gone off to the other side of the universe to do something else more interesting. He's working with us. He's working for us. And so a lot of times, you know what the biggest issue is for us is we're in a hurry to get something done. We want to do it our way. You know, and if it's going to get done right, well, then I'll do it. I'll just get it done. I'll solve it. But spiritually, that's usually a problem. We have to let God do it and let God act in God's time and in God's way. It's our pride or our, somehow we are getting in the way. So we need to learn what, what Joshua the high priest does in this vision. He, he submits. He doesn't fight them as they take away the filthy garments. He doesn't fight them as they put on the rich, clean garments. He allows God to clothe him. And we need to allow God to transform us the Bible talks, you know, about letting us have the mind, let the mind that's in Jesus, let that mind be in you, Philippians 2, verse 5. We need to let God continue to transform our spirit, our attitude, so that his mind, his, his approach to the world is in us. And if we do that, mighty things will happen. Mm -hmm.